Hey everyone, this is April. Today we are going to look at two almost identical phones. The Xperia TX LT29i and the Xperia T LT30P called the Bond phone and marketed in the US as the LTE equipped model, the Xperia TL LT30AT. We've compared these two against other competing devices, but this time let's put them against each other. If portability is important to you, you'll be happy with either the Xperia T or TX. Both are pocketable. The TX is slightly taller and wider, yet also lighter. It's slimmer than the Xperia T and looks elegant. In contrast, the Xperia TX is slightly heavier and thicker, but shorter and less wide, which makes it look stocky and solid. Both these phones have their jet black screens accented by a thin frame of plastic. It's subtle on the Xperia T, but it looks cool on the TX. Up front, you'll only see the Sony and Xperia word marks in silver. You won't find any physical buttons on both phones since both rely on virtual keys. If you turn on your Xperia TX, you'll see the Xperia word mark light up. This is a cool effect that I particularly like. The front camera, sensors, phone speaker grill, and notification light are on the top bezel. The notification light, however, is located on different corners of the phones. The Xperia T's is here, and on the TX, it's here. The headphone jack at the top is very convenient, especially for people like me who frequently listen to music on the go. The positions of the buttons and ports also differ on the two. At the left side of the Xperia T is the micro USB port, but on the TX is the power key. At the right side of the T are where most of its buttons and ports are positioned. Micro SD and micro SIM card slots, power key, volume rocker, and hardware shutter button. On the same side on the Xperia TX are its micro USB port, volume rocker, and dedicated shutter button. At the bottom side of both phones is a small hole for the microphone. I consider the Xperia T's micro USB port to be in a good location since it's less likely to be covered by your finger. However, I'm not very fond of how the buttons are placed on both Xperia phones. They look very busy to me. The elements on the phone's bags are centered and aligned in exactly the same order. 13 megapixel camera, camera flash, Nmark logo, Xperia logo, and loudspeaker. Owing to the shape of their back panels, both the Xperia T and TX are very comfortable to hold in the hand. Their inward curving backs allow both phones to rest on your palm. The Xperia T's back is covered in soft touch rubbery material that does not attract fingerprints, while that on the TX is textured plastic. Both make gripping easy. For me, the Xperia TX's back panel is more attractive mainly because it is removable. Even the battery is removable and replaceable. I'm even willing to speculate that this removable back is partly the reason why the phone's sides are not too crowded with ports and slots. The micro SD and micro SIM card slots are right here under the back cover. Both the T and TX have 4.55 inch TFT LCD capacitive touchscreens with Sony's mobile Bravia engine, making these phones perfect for viewing pictures, watching movies, and playing HD games. Though I noticed that the Xperia T's brighter colors look unnatural and washed out compared to the Xperia TX's own slightly yellowish, darker, and more natural looking colors. The touchscreen displays on both phones are snappy and generally responsive, but I noticed that the Xperia T tends to be more responsive and loads web pages faster. In terms of processing muscle, both phones have been left behind by the quad-core bandwagon, but their dual-core processors work just fine for them. Both of these phones are powered by the same dual-core Snapdragon S4 MSM8268 chipset, with 1.5GHz Crate CPU, Adreno 225 GPU, and 1GB of RAM. For storage, either phone has only 16GB of inbuilt storage, but thanks to microSD card slots, each one can accept up to 32GB more storage, bringing total storage to 48GB on each phone. Both phones come with NFC, DLNA, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, neither supports 4G LTE, but AT&T's variant of the Xperia T, the Xperia TL, LT30AT does. Nowadays, many devices come with or have been upgraded to Android 4.1 or even Android 4.2, but both the Xperia T and the Xperia TX are still on Android 4.0.4 ice cream sandwich topped with Sony's Timescape UI. According to Sony, both phones will be getting Jelly Bean in early 2013. Since they both run the same operating system and UI, these two phones have the same basic features, from the lock screen to the notification menu, app drawer, and security features. 
The Xperia T, however, comes with playbooks, play movies, music unlimited, and video unlimited pre-installed. Despite the earlier Android version and the dual-core processing, I was surprised to see these two phones play 1080p Full HD videos without as much as a fleeting stutter, much less a momentary choke. As for audio, listening is a joy on either phone. Between the two, I find the Xperia T more capable of louder and crisper audio. Both come with Sony's Walkman app, and tagging along with it are equalizer presets, a 5-band equalizer, clear bass, and xLoud functionality. So yeah, multimedia playback is extremely pleasurable on these two phones. Both phones have 13 megapixel back cameras blessed with Sony Exmor R sensors and hardware shutter buttons. These phones are also meant to double as digital cameras with such powerful camera hardware. They produce good-looking photos in a variety of lighting conditions, though I noticed that the TX photos tend to have a yellowish tint. The Xperia T tends to provide crisper and more vibrant photos. Video capture, however, has shattered my heart. I was expecting Sony quality performance, especially with image stabilization features on both phones. Sadly, most of my test video clips came out shaky and jittery. Powering the Xperia T is a non-removable, non-replaceable 1850mAh lithium-ion battery for about 7 hours of talk time on 3G, while on the Xperia TX is a removable 1700mAh lithium polymer battery for about 6 hours of talk time on 3G. Battery length, however, depends on your usage habits. In very many ways, the Xperia T and TX are similar. They have similar processing hardware and similar screen technologies. Though the Xperia T provides brighter colors and often aggressively and excessively reduces noise, while the TX gives more natural and vivid colors. The Xperia T also delivers crisper and louder sound and snaps photos quite well whether indoors or outdoors. Which of these phones do you like? The Xperia T or the Xperia TX? Let us know in the comments. Get more Android news and reviews from AndroidAuthority.com and our YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching. This is April. Until next time, may the light side of the Android Force be with you.